That stabilizes our families. It stabilizes our societies. It stabilizes our psyches. And so anything you do that isn't in service of that goal is likely to be counterproductive. When you're thinking about an ethic that has to do with any fundamental motivation like sexuality, you have to think about it in the context of the rest of your life. Who's in control? That's the issue. Is it you or is it the sexuality? There's no such thing as casual sex. I think the reason for that is that the consequences of sex are too dramatic. Resentment and anger are a good indication that there's something wrong with the manner in which your sexuality is restrained. What's the highest good? Sexuality incorporated within functional, intimate relationship, bound by vows of mutual celibacy. That stabilizes our families. It stabilizes our societies. It stabilizes our psyches. And so anything you do that isn't in service of that goal is likely to be counterproductive. And I suspect it's your own psyche, your own soul telling you that. What's the point of conducting your life ethically? <clears throat> the answer to that isn't so that you follow the proper rules precisely. The answer to that is so that you balance your life so that it's as productive and meaningful as it can possibly be. And that would be productive and meaningful for you with any luck, but also for people around you. That would even be better. And for you now and next week and into the future. So when you're thinking about an ethic that has to do with any fundamental motivation like sexuality, you have to think about it in the context of the rest of your life. Who's in control? That's the issue. Is it you or is it the sexuality that's in control? Is, have you integrated your sexual life into the rest of your life so that the whole thing makes a harmonious balance? Because if you're not in charge with that harmonious balance, then things are gonna waver wildly out of control and you're going to find yourself in dreadful. Now, it seems to me that sexuality is best handled within the confines of a relationship. That's the classic ethical solution to the problem. It's because sexuality brings with it a tremendous amount of responsibility. It's easy for people to believe in, what would you call it? Casual sex, which is not something that I think exists because I don't think you can divorce sex from its sociological or political or economic or psychological consequences. There's no such thing as casual sex. I think the reason for that is that the consequences of sex are too dramatic. It's not just pregnancy and disease, let's say, which are both as dramatic as consequences can be in life, but also the fact that if you try to disentangle your sexual behavior from your emotional behavior, then I think what happens is that you end up cold and cynical. There's nothing deep about it. There's nothing that, that enables you to establish a relationship with another person. I think that you corrupt your soul in that way and that you hurt yourself across time and of course you're going to hurt other people as well. So if your sexuality is integrated in an ethic that encompasses the rest of your life and if it serves that ethic, then I would say it's properly restrained. If it's unhealthily repressed, then you're angry and bitter. I think resentment and anger are a good indication that there's something wrong with the manner in which you're sexuality is restrained.